So we're here with Gail Banks, uh, one of the legends of high performance uh, engines. Uh, you've done a lot of interesting stuff over the years, um, going way back, done a lot of things with gasoline engines, but in the last decade or so, it seems I think a lot of your focus has been on diesel engines. Can you talk a little bit about um, why you got involved with high performance diesel engines and what, what, uh, what you're doing with them? Well, you know, this is my 50th year of doing everything wrong or everything right with engines. Depends on your point of view. For us at Banks, it's always been about finding the efficiency, making the thing more powerful, but not a fuel hog. Keep it clean. Anybody who runs endurance racing, and we've been doing that for 50 years, uh, all forms of endurance racing, from Baja to boats or offshore, uh, is looking for the best fuel efficiency and the best engine life. And of course, as a racer, you're always looking for the racer's edge and power. So I got interested in diesel teaching turbocharged engine design at General Motors Institute, which is today Kettering. Right. Uh, 1980 was the last time I did this, but at that time there was a huge interest in diesel in 1980. So what happened was Pontiac asked us to take their then coming 82 Firebird which was highly aerodynamic, to the salt flats. They gave us a pre-production car. We started preparing it in secret. GMC, since a lot of Pontiac dealers sold GMC trucks, gave us some support trucks. They had the new, then new 6.2 diesel V8. So our diesel interest goes back to the late 70s, actually. Uh, because we'd actually worked on that 6.2 engine as a marine prototype engine. It never entered our marine line, but our diesel interest dates from about 1978. So that's 30 years. 78, 88, 98, 08. Uh, I've always liked the concept of diesel in that it's inherently efficient. So today we have something different going on. Today, it's like the engine of the future is 110 years old. That Rudolf Diesel's invention, with the advent of Bosch Electronics and fuel management, uh, wet fuel system componentry, becomes the magic bullet for the future. Why is that? That's because it utilizes technologies that exist, it utilizes a fuel infrastructure that exists, and the harder you work the engines, the more fuel efficient they become compared to gasoline. Secondly, we can use socially acceptable fuels. Fuels which are basically made from waste products, such as wood chips, weeds that grow in the desert, uh, where you have a low carbon footprint establishing the fuel. And a, and a lower carbon footprint when you're burning them. It takes us off the foreign oil dependence. We're all looking for, for another way home there. I'm not saying diesel is the only solution, but it is probably the next decade to two decades a key solution. What are, what are we trying to do in California? Well, I come from an area where speed and style and everything else that's what you do in California. We're kind of the innovators. That's, that's our role. A lot of styling studios in California for major automakers from around the country and around the world. California is a, if you will, incub incubator of the automotive future. We want to, and what we've been doing since 2001, is working on changing the concept of diesel, not that it's green or not, we, the diesel industry has proved that diesel is green. It's a socially responsible fuel and engine type worldwide. That's established. But what about performance? You know, in California, a lot of people think today that diesel is banned in California. Well, that's going to change pretty, pretty quickly as the, a lot of German cars come in that are 50 state legal diesels. My goal is to establish a market for diesel wherein a soccer mom in Santa Monica says to her husband, hey, the next car we get, let's get that diesel. 
that's that's the righteous thing to do. I want a diesel in my sport ute or my crossover. We get the soccer mom to say that, we're home. Yeah. That's what we're looking for. And I think we're gaining ground. The first thing we did at Banks was we put together the world's first diesel sport truck. We basically did kind of the Pontiac GTO idea, big engine, lightweight car, only we did it with a lightweight truck and a large Cummins common rail Bosch injected engine. We drove it to the Salt Flats where I held a record with GMC with the Cyclone for pickup trucks at 210 miles an hour. The Cyclone arrived in a trailer we arrived driving the race vehicle from Los Angeles with a trailer behind it with its racing gear in the truck. So, quite a difference there. We then put all the equipment on the truck, the high-speed tires and the correct gears in the rear axle, and we ran a best speed of 222 miles an hour. We hold a two-way FIA world record of 217 plus. We then took it on the hot rod power tour from Wisconsin to Florida it was the fastest, most fuel efficient vehicle on the power tour that year, 24 and a half miles per gallon with a 220 plus top speed, driven on the street flawlessly, very reliably. What we, what we wanted to do was we wanted to establish a diesel performance image outside of big pickup trucks or class 8 semis. What we wanted to do was to show that diesel can be a performance image in the mind of performance types, people who drive Corvettes or Porsches or what have you. And we did it with this pickup truck. Now we're establishing other records. We've built a pickup truck to run in drag racing. Uh, in testing, it has run for the European contingent zero to 300 kph in 7.72 seconds. Standing start. For the Americans, that's about 180 plus miles an hour. It is the first diesel pickup to ever go that quick or that fast in a standing quarter mile. We now want to take that to some events this year and set some records. Uh, so that's coming. We're also looking at a, a top dragster this is NHRA, and if you think about racing in the United States, we're here, we're at a sports car event. Uh, sports car racing, I, I enjoy because I think it's the greatest contest of, uh, for an automobile designer. Uh, the toughest thing to solve, far more than straight line drag racing. But in the United States, actually, the big automotive sports are NHRA drag racing and NASCAR. Well, we can't run diesels in NASCAR, at least not yet. Yeah.